I'm Vincent Everett, Head of Languages at Northgate High School, Durham, and this is a talk I prepared for Language World 2020 for the Association for Language Learning. I think I've been a member of the Association for Language Learning for 25 years. Um, happy birthday, AWL, this year for your 30th birthday. I think I've been to 15, 16 Language World conferences, and it's also 15 years um, since I first did a talk. Um, very similar to this one back in Canterbury in 2005. This is called Beyond the Sentence and there's a deliberate enjambment, building, spontaneous speaking, developing, writing, creating stories, because sentence builders are very much in fashion at the moment. They haven't always been called that, but they're great and we use them a lot. But what worries me is how do you wean pupils off the sentence builder so they can speak for themselves and why, why stop at the sentence? So hopefully that's what we're going to, to look at today. This would be lovely if we could end up with this, uh, a story in Spanish. I love going to the beach, especially if it's sunny. If I go with my family, I can go and eat in a restaurant. If I go with my friends, we eat fish and chips. If it's sunny, I love to eat an ice cream and sunbathe on the beach. I don't like to swim because even when it's quite, even when it's sunny, it's still too cold to go swimming. I can play with a ball or look for shells. For example, last Saturday it was nice and sunny, so I said to my mum, can we go to the beach? She said, no, you've got to do your homework. So I said, well, in geography, we're studying the coast, so I can take some pictures for my geography project. So we went to the beach, I took loads of photos of the cliff in my phone, and I was looking for fossils in the be on the beach. I found three shells, a plastic fish, and a dead dog. I took a lot of photos, my mum said, your project's great, I'm going to buy you an ice cream. So we went to buy ice creams, but when I was eating my ice cream, my phone fell in the sand. I'm going to look for photos on the internet for my project. Okay, that was quite quick, but we've got a bit of time to get up to this level, working through step by step. Okay, so here we have a very basic sentence uh, builder for talking about uh, free time. And I'm going to show you how I get pupils to use it. Um, it turns out that speaking French is the easy bit, thinking up what to say is the difficult bit. So one partner is going to think up what to say and the other one's going to say the French. So um, let's just let's just go. Okay, I like sport. Uh, J'aime le sport. Uh, especially. Surtout. Um, if. Si. I can. Je peux. Play tennis. Jouer au tennis. With my friends. Avec mes amis. But. Mais. Um, if. Si. I have to Je dois uh, play jouer with my family. Avec ma famille. Um, I prefer Je préfère to play football. Jouer au foot. Um, or Ou. um, go to the swimming pool. Aller à la piscine. Because parce que I love j'adore uh, to swim. Nager. Uh, for example, Par exemple, um, at the weekend, le weekend, I am going to je vais uh, to play tennis. Jouer au tennis at the park, au park, with my friends. Avec mes amis. Okay, so you can see it's a sentence builder, but because we've always got and, but, so, because, for example, um, it goes beyond just single sentences. Um, and you've split the work so that the person thinking up something coherent to say and what idea is coming next is doing the difficult bit. The person doing the French is just um, at this stage using the sheet. Also, you'll notice we're trying to use as many as we can from the first column. Now, I've, I've lost track. I think we used I like, I think we used I prefer, I think we used can, I think maybe we used have to and going to. And also out of the third column, used quite a few. But in the middle column, just try and stick to a two or three things. Otherwise, it becomes a list and it's and it's and it's incoherent. OK, now, what would you do next? Well, next, we would swap round and my partner would practice thinking up what to say. So that my partner also gets very good at thinking up new things and I get a go at doing the French. And then we would speed date it around the classroom. So you would work with a whole series of partners as the teacher tells you to move on. And you might repeat the same ideas. Um, to your new partner, but they've never heard them before. Um, or you might make up a new thing each time. Um, making something up and making it more coherent, more developed, is, is what the teacher would remind you of in between each um, change of partners. 
and also the teacher as the lesson goes on would say to the pupils that they, that they need to stop looking at the sheet as much they they can just look up from the sheet or they can turn the sheet over or they can get rid of it completely so that they become more and more independent of of the uh, having the french written down in front of them i would say the person doing the english should keep the sheet in front of them otherwise it becomes very limited to i like tennis that's all i can remember Okay, so here's another one. Um, this is school. So I like geography because I can study rivers, but I like to work with my friends and in geography I have to work in silence, so I prefer French in French. Okay, um, you'll see we're starting to build up similar language. So the first column, j'aime, j'adore, je déteste, is very similar to the one you saw before. And then the middle column has got school related words. And the third column, again, things to do with school. But as much of it as possible is still linked to language that they're building up that they can transfer from one topic to another. This one is a different layout. Um, on the topic of jobs this time, I would like to work with my dad, but um, you can't travel a lot, and I love, okay, so you're going through building up your sentence when you get to the end, but I wouldn't like to, so it's more than a sentence, you're going round and round again more than once. Okay, so this one looks very similar, um, but you'll see the different bo um, boxes are in different colours, so all the future ones, je vais, je voudrais, je veux, are in purple here. Um, connectives, conjunctions are in green, parce que surtout si et me. Um, opinions are in yellow, and the can, can't, have to, want to are in red. So it's about jobs. I would like to be a builder because you don't have to work with children, um, because I wouldn't like to. Okay, very similar. I'll show you what the colours are for. Um, this one as well, so I like unicorns and you have to look after animals and you shouldn't buy their ivory personally. Okay, so you can produce something like this, which is a text where the students are writing the different chunks in the different colour. So in Norwich there is a cinema and I love to go with my friends. Um, I can see a film and there is also a pool where I can swim. So you can see instantly if they've got a good range of connectives, if they've got a good balance of um, opinions, I love, I like, I prefer, alongside I can, I can't, I have to, I want to, uh, and make sure they're, and it, it slows the writing down, it makes them write in a different way, they've got to change pens, it, it might make it look pretty, this one's not too pretty. This one's got a lovely key, but it just changes the writing process for something that um, they sit and look at a blank piece of paper, I don't know what to write, to something where they are building very carefully out of different coloured blocks and, and it just it just goes, goes like a dream. So this is the same idea but with the model text, um, either in, with colouring pencils in class or you can go to the computer room and they can highlight in a Word document so that they're annotating the different chunks that this is built up out of. Um, and then at the end you can see at a glance which one of these texts has got the sentences that are too short because they've not used any conjunctions, um, which one just repeats opinions without ever justifying them, or which ones have got a good balance of I like because I can but I can't because I want to. Um, and then that acts as a model text for their own writing. And again, getting across the idea of writing as a process. It's not a magical thing that you can't do or that frightened of a blank piece of paper. This is another one that I use, again, for that very physicality of how to build a sentence. Um, so this is Wheel of Names. Wheel of Names is a website where you can put pupils' names into a spinner and you spin one and it selects the pupil. Um, I like to use it with um, sentence builders, as you can see. Um, so you put in the words, I like, I was going to, I decided to, I would like to, I have to, I want, I can. And the middle one's got all the infinitives. Um, the third one along has got places and who with, that kind of thing. And then the fourth one, so it can go round and round and round, has got a connective or a conjunction to go back to the beginning. So, for example, because... Um, so you could get a sentence like, I like to see a film 
at the cinema, but I have to do my homework at the weekend, so I want... Um, okay, obviously with the spinner it doesn't always come up with the one that you want, but you're getting across that, that thing of you've got the options, spin the spinner, and then, then we're on to, on to how do we make sense, how do we make a sentence that, that works. But the actual producing a sentence and continuing the sentence and going round isn't, isn't the problem. Um, I don't do this as a big activity. Um, I would do it at the beginning of a lesson if I've got time to get four of these windows set up. Uh, before the lesson starts, and the pupils like it, they, they like to do the spinning, they like the crazy sentences it can make, um, and it's just to show them that writing is something that does itself, it's, there's no magic to it, you build a sentence out of what you've, what you've got and what you know. Uh, this needs a new name, since Pimp My Ride isn't popular anymore, um, but basically what you've got at the top is a text that's very repeaty. I like to go to France. I like to go to the beach. I like to sunbathe. I, I don't like to eat in a French restaurant. I don't. And they've got this whole kit underneath that they can then use to jazz that up and make it a much better writing. I like to go to France, especially if I can go to the beach because I... Okay. Um, again, if you've got any suggestions for a better name than Pimp My French, because um, it doesn't mean anything to them anymore, now Pimp My Rides, not on TV. Good programme. Another one to get across the mechanical nature and the, the way you make sentences out of what you've got, make them draw or make them write a, a tree that can extend forever up uh, longer and longer and longer or branch off into many, many branches. Uh, so in Deerham there isn't a forest so I can't walk my dog. In Deerham there is a cinema where I can see a film I, so I can go with, I can't read the rest of it. This is on long, 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 long bits of um, wallpaper backing wallpaper backing rolls that cost about £1.50 each uh, and again they enjoy it they, it makes them think about writing very differently instead of sitting there I don't know what to put or trying to say something they don't know how to say they've produced a myriad of, of different branching off sentences already and then you go back to write let's which ones are we going to keep how can we make it make sense how can we get this into a piece of writing how can we say things that you want to actually say okay um, I'm going to use the laser pointer on this slide. There you are. That's a very disappointing laser. I think they've I think they've set it to stun. I also know that it um, tends to get ahead of what I'm doing. So I'm going to talk and then move the laser. So this is a ski slope that they draw. This blue line from the top left to the bottom right of a double page in their book, so it goes much further down there, much longer. And then they write a sentence from the side of the page all the way across to the ski slope, at which point the teacher will uh, come round and draw a snowboarding penguin at the end of the sentence. Of course, at the same time, 30 other children have also just finished writing their very short first sentence, uh, but that's half the fun. Then they will write a slightly longer sentence because now it's got to get from the side of the page to the ski slope, which is a little bit further. And it's going to get longer and longer and longer and eventually they'll have to write all the way across a double page all the way you can't even see. Um, it might be a separate sentence, j'aime le sport, um, j'adore le rugby, but this one actually, j'adore le rugby has changed into j'adore le rugby mais je dis Right, the dice game. So, um, while we're looking at examples of making the writing uh, more physical, um, less mysterious, imagine I've got an imaginary dice, you can't see me and I haven't got one anyway, but we're going to choose from the first lot, I'm going to shake... Ah, quatre. J'adore. Okay, going to shake again. Uh, trois. Restez à la maison. Okay, shake again. Parce que, un, je peux, quatre, manger, and you're building up a sentence. Some of them will make sense. I like to stay at home because I can go fishing. That makes no sense at all. And the pupils will enjoy making sentences that make sense, that don't make sense. You can take the dice away from them and say, okay, now I need you to write a sentence that makes sense without uh, the dice. Or you could say, please write three crazy ones and two sensible 
So, the, what we're trying to do at the moment, I know it's about sentence builders, but get across this idea that food is, French is like food tech. Um, you, you have your ingredients, you've got, in this case, it doesn't have to be, but you've got I like, I love, I prefer, I can, I can't, I have, I want to, I'm going to, uh, your infinitives, you're going to build in other things on top of that, you're going to build in present tense, past tense, imperfect tense, what I would have preferred to have done, what people said. Um, so you've got those ingredients and you make something out of them. You make sure you use as many of those ingredients as possible, so you've got, you don't repeat, I like, I like, I like. Um, and you get the proportions right. So if you're making a cake, you want cake, you want a nice bit of icing, but not too much, and you want one cherry. So it's mainly I like, I love, I prefer, I can, I can't, I have to, I want to. Some tenses, and then maybe one I would have preferred to, to put the cherry on, on top of the cake. Uh, this is a picture at the top from, I think from Isabel Jones's blog about a talk that I gave with Kate Shepherd Walwyn in 2011, a whole talk on the idea of language being um, a chocolate cake. We do this for tests. So this is stage one of a writing test. Um, pupils get their ingredients ready. In exam conditions, they will fill in the I know this column. I like, j'aime, I love, j'adore. If they don't know it, they put a line in, so I know that they've left that blank. And then before the test starts, we'll either put it up in the board or they can hunt for it in their folders, but fill in any missing ones in column two that says I had to look this up. Uh, this is page one of two. It's, not, it's normally on A3. And it's got all the ingredients for a good piece of writing. And then they do their writing in test conditions. Everyone's got the ingredients for a good piece of writing. But when they hand it in with this sheet, I can see who had those ingredients internalised and who had those ingredients they had, but they had to look them up. And then the mark is based on how much help did you need? Um, partly on how much of a good piece of writing is it? Is it logical? Is it accurate? Um, are you extending it logically? But you can see from this sheet very quickly who, who needed to look up lots of words and who genuinely knew them. It stops pupils writing things they didn't, don't know how to say. Um, and it also makes sure they can tick the things off. They, this idea of ingredients, they're ticking off their ingredients, making sure they've used a good balance and they've used nearly all of them. And you'll have noticed that all these sentence builders are very much built around a common core uh, of language. It doesn't have to be opinions and reasons and then tenses. Um, I suppose that's determined to some extent by our, by our syllabus. Um, certainly, you, whatever you teach, I know Rachel Hawkes, for example, has always taught a lot of um, present tense verb endings and then built from that. Um, as long as it sticks, um, because otherwise you can get pupils who are there sitting there through loads and loads of French and you say where's your French and they've let it all melt just like the snow is all gone um, don't let it melt and the only way to do that is to keep your French in a nice snowball that is yours and you keep it and you keep letting it get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger everything new that you learn needs to stick to that ball of French that's partly our job of giving the students a curriculum that does that and partly the students need to know that you don't learn something and forget it and learn something new and hopefully that becomes then a coherent core of language that everything new can stick to. Okay so here's a new sentence builder very similar format to what we've seen before a few extra things that you can see with red rings around them so we're not going to start with those straight away we will we will start with opinions and reasons this is about going to the beach okay right I'm going to do the same thing as before with my helpful volunteer here. So when I go to the beach, Quand je vais à la plage, I love uh, to play with the ball jouer avec un ballon, and um, draw elephants in the sand et dessiner des éléphants dans le sable, um, especially if si it is nice, il fait beau, but mais if it rains Si il pleut, I prefer je, uh, je prefer to you see thinking up what to say is a difficult bit <laughs> to um, take some photos. Prendre des photos. Okay, for example, Par exemple, last weekend, le weekend dernier, I was going to 
uh, do my homework. Um, le devoir. But. Me. Uh, my mum said. Ma mère a dit. It's nice. Il fait beau. I would like to go to the beach. Je, je vous uh, To go to the beach. À la plage. Um, so. Alors. Um, I decided. J'ai décidé de. Uh, go to the beach with my mum. Aller à la plage avec ma mère. But. Mais. It was raining. Il pleuvait. Um, so. Alors. Next weekend. Uh, le weekend prochain. I'm going to do my homework. Je vais faire le devoir. So what we've got here is some cheats to go beyond just I like, I can, I want, and some fancy if sentences. So we're using I said, he said, she said. And what people say can just be things from column one. She said, I would like to go to the beach. I said, I have to do my homework. Um, then cheating again. So, but actually it sounds very good. I, did, I was going to do my homework, but I decided to go to the beach with my mum what the weather was like, it was nice, it was raining. Okay, so you're starting to get stories coming through. You haven't brought in tenses yet, but you found some little ways of getting around it. Um, also starting to get the idea that for a story, something has to go wrong. Um, what I really needed at the end was, I would have preferred to stay at home, but uh, at this stage, we don't know that particular cheat. Here's another one. This is about um, going out to the cinema or to a concert or something like that. And again, you start with I like, I love, I prefer, I can, especially if, but I, uh, I want. And then you can bring in speech. My friend said, I want to go to the cinema. I said, but I prefer to go to a concert. Um, you can say what the weather was like. You can say what you were going to do, what you decided to do um, in exactly the same way. OK, exactly the same. Uh, this time it's about places you could go, places you can visit, and what you can do there. Um, starting on this one, there are some tenses in little boxes, if people want to say, I went, or what they did. Um, but otherwise you can do it using the cheats that we saw before, um, talking about what you were going to do, what you decided to do. And those cheats actually work very, very well, as long as you don't overuse them. It's quite sophisticated, sophisticated to say what you were going to do, what you decided to do, and why. And the speech sounds good, it brings it to life if you want to create a story. And then what people actually say, remember, can be very simple. I like, I don't like, I want to, I'm going to, I have to. So now you're getting good at using sentences. This is something you can do now without the sheet, or you can do it with the sheet if you want, just to get a bit more freedom, um, go in different directions, not be so um, limited to following the boxes or the order on the sheet. So you start with a sentence, um, j'aime aller à la piscine, I like to go to the swimming pool, and then you'll roll, uh, in this case, my imaginary dice, uh, parce que j'aime aller à la piscine, parce que j'aime nager, uh, roll the dice, oh, I got a three, surtout si je peux aller avec mes amis, okay, um, and you keep going and keep going and keep going. These can be then, in your GCSE, these can be your little prompts, if you say to a pupil, they're, they're expecting you to say eh, and they'll say more detail or um, pasca, and they'll give you a reason. In fact, you can use them as quite specific triggers. So, um, surtout si, giving an explanation or saying what the weather was like. But par exemple, in the GCSE, you don't need to say, please give me an example in the past tense. If your pupils understand that when you go par exemple, that you usually want an example in the past. Um, alors, maybe what happened next or what's going to happen next time. And they're in this order. I know we've got dice, so they come in any order, but naturally I like to go swimming and I like to go to the beach because uh, I love to go to the beach with my friends, especially if it's sunny. For example, last weekend I went to the beach. I had a lovely time. So next week I've got to stay at home, do my homework. But I don't like to go swimming in the swimming pool. So you use the, then you keep the me until you've finished everything you can say on the first thing you were saying, and then you change the subject and you go around again. Um, so either using the dice to, to make you move away from the limits of following the sheet, or use this order as a good game plan for, for a, a well-constructed piece of speaking that, that um, becomes a bit of a routine, so you're used to developing your ideas. 
At this point, we're swapping to Spanish. Uh, this is the same sheet. This is um, when I go to the beach, I like to play with a ball and look for shells and draw elephants in the sand, especially if it is sunny. But if it rains, I prefer to play on the arcades. Um, at the weekend, I was going to do my homework, but my mum said it's sunny, so I decided to go to the beach. Um, it was raining, so I ate an ice cream and I came home. But can you see there are now boxes with the endings to change nadar into nade and nadar into nadaba for I was swimming. Um, and we're going to look at those to make it into a, a more of a story, not just a cheating story. Um, what I would do first is here are some scenarios. Uh, comprar un helado, comer, dejar caer, un perro, comer. They're mostly verbs, but I've had to put the dog in there. You can see what the story is. And so you're going to change these verbs before you set out. Um, I bought an ice cream. It's going to be compre un helado. We make a little note of that and do that. Comer is going to be, one of them's always going to be what was happening. We're going to construct stories that say what was happening and what happened. So I bought an ice cream. I was eating the ice cream when I dropped the ice cream. A dog ate the ice cream. I'll get those verbs on a little bit of paper on the board or we'll do it together first, conjugated, just not sentences yet, just verbs, or to buy some chips, to eat, a seagull, to steal. So it's going to be, I bought some chips. The was ing is going to be, I was eating again, comia, and the seagull stole the chips. Um, chapotear en las olas, to paddle in the waves. Um, pisar una medusa, to stand on a, a jellyfish. Um, it stung me, and to wheeze, because your friend wheezed on your foot because you stood on a jellyfish. So I was paddling in the waves when I stood on a jellyfish. It stung me, my friend weed on my foot. So you are now going to be telling stories, but we don't do that straight away. We go back right to the beginning of the sheet like we did before with the French one. So I like to go to the beach, etc, 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 etc. And then you bring in the story that you've that you've done the verbs for already. So this is year nine Spanish. We begin Spanish in year nine. Um, very quick bit of writing. Maybe even I think they do it as speaking first, and then they've written up at the end of the lesson very quickly. Me encanta ir a la playa, sobre todo si hace calor, porque puedo hacer castillos de arena. El fin de semana pasado hacía castillos de arena cuando pisé una medusa. So I love going to the beach, as per our sheet especially if it's sunny because I can make sandcastles. Uh, last weekend I was making, there's your imperfect, what was happening, sandcastles when I stood on a jellyfish. It stung me. I was crying so my friend weed on my foot. I got told off at a previous session for using mear by a Spanish person so it's rude. I learnt my Spanish in Mexico, that's my excuse. In Mexico I know lots of very funny songs involving the word mear, it doesn't seem rude at all. Anyway, Es un buen amigo. I'm going to buy him a hedgehog. This group were obsessed with hedgehogs. It was meant to be, I'm going to buy him an ice cream. Um, here's another one. Again, the same lesson. I love going to the beach, especially if it's sunny. This is straight off the sheet because I can have a picnic with my family. And by this stage, they're very familiar. They can do this all day. I like, I can, um, and I can swim. Last weekend, I went to the beach. I bought an ice cream, but a seagull pooed on my ice cream. I dropped it and a dog ate my ice cream. I cried and I went home. My mum said, we'll go to the beach next weekend. This is now a story, okay? This is going from what you like and why, and then saying what was happening, what happened, and then some speech bringing it to life. Um, exactly the same format you can see here. Cuando voy a la playa, when I go to the beach, I like to walk the dog and eat an ice cream. So hopefully that's going to come through in the end so that we've got that coherence of not choosing too many disparate ideas and sticking to as much variety with one or two ideas to really develop them. And then you've got the scope for another paragraph on, on one of your other ideas. When I go to the beach, I like to walk the dog and eat an ice cream, especially if it's sunny. Um, but when it rains, I have to do my homework and have a picnic with my family or have tea with my family. I prefer to go shopping with my friends in town. Last weekend, I went to the beach with my friends. I was eating an ice cream when a dog stole my ice cream, so I cried. So this is our final metaphor here. 
Um, this is from an article I wrote for AWL for the uh, Language Today magazine um, a year ago, I think, a year and a half ago. Now, it depends how much you're into football. Um, if you know about football, you're learning about Spanish. If you're not too into football, then you might learn something about football as well. But these days, you have to be confident playing out from the back. So the goalkeeper's got the ball. They don't just kick it up the pitch. They will play it to a defender. And then that defender might play it back to the goalkeeper. And the defender will move into a space and the goalkeeper will play it out to the defender again. Probably you're playing the defender playing with their back to the direction they're kicking because they're defending the ball against the attackers who are behind them trying to put pressure on. But there's no pressure. All day long, they can play the ball from one to another back to the goalkeeper because no one's frightened of passing back to the goalkeeper these days. Um, you can play a 1-2 where you play the ball and then you move into a new position and the person passes it back to you. Then we're going to look at the attacking phase. You've got to make sure you're onside. You can't be in an offside position, otherwise the whole attack um, fails, especially with VAR these days. Get your body position correct to receive the ball. So previously, when we were playing defensively, you were probably facing away from the, the, the way you were attacking, back towards your own goal, to receive the ball, so you're, sh you're, you're sheltering it against the... Def defending the ball against the attacker. You might play another one too. And then in the attacking half of the pitch, you can take some risks. You can try a Maradona turn or a, you know, a Ronaldo flick or something. How does that translate into, into language learning? Well, playing out from the back is being absolutely confident all day long. You can say, I like because I want to. I like because I can. I don't like because I can't. I like because I don't have to. And but so because you know you can, you can just keep that going all day absolutely confident you're not going to get it wrong you're not going to get stuck you might start going round and round again but but you can do it playing a one two if it's sunny i like to go to the beach but if it rains i prefer to stay at home if i can go with my family but if i have to be with my friends okay so there's always two if there's always two versions with an if sentence two for the price of one Getting on side, I would say state your time frame. Don't suddenly saying, start saying, I went to the beach. S -s Set it up properly at the weekend, two weekends ago, on Tuesday. Body position to receive the ball. Now, you would be sideways on in football, so that instead of playing it to your feet, that your, your goalkeeper or the other defender can play it in front of you to run onto. And you're sideways on, so you're ready to go. To get ready for telling your story, you, before you say what happened, you say what was happening or what was going to happen, as we know with our cheat. This time in the attacking half, your direct speech can be the one to, I said, I'd like to go to the beach. My mum said, you've got to do your homework. And then risk taking. Uh, this is where you do, I would have preferred to stay at home or, or something that you, you might mess up. It's quite fancy, but it's fine. You, you go for it. It's not like you're gonna score an own goal or anything. Um, you're in the attacking half, there's no danger, just do something to make yourself look good. So that students go in, for example, to a speaking activity with a game plan. There's no, oh, I don't know what I'm going to say, I don't know what I'm going to write, I don't, know what to, I don't know what to say. It's also a bit like um, if you give a mouse a cookie. If you give a mouse a cookie, he's going to ask for a glass of milk. If you give a mouse a glass of milk, he's going to want to look in the mirror to see if he's got a milk moustache. If you let a mouse look in the mirror, okay, same with this. If you're going to say, I like, you're probably going to say, because I can. If you say, I don't like, you're probably going to say, because I have to. If you say, I have to, you might then say, especially if. But if you've got one if, you say, but if, the other alternative, and say, then I do like. Then you're going to say, at the weekend. But before you say what happened, you're going to say what was happening or what, was going, what you were going to do. Okay, and the whole thing is now a routine that you can follow through. Um, you're not sitting there wondering what to say. But it turns out thinking up what to say is the difficult bit. The French, the Spanish, we make sure we teach them that. And we do it over and over again until they can do it better and better and without using so much support. Okay, so here's one. Uh, I love to go to Norwich on the bus with my friends. Again, this is Year 9 Spanish. Um, they start in Year 9. We very quickly move through what we've, you know, what we've seen um, today. I love to go to Norwich on the bus with my friends at the weekend because we can eat at McDonald's. If I go with my family, my mum doesn't like eating fast food, 
so we have to eat a sandwich in Marks and Spencer's. I prefer to go with my friends, although I have to pay with my own money. Last Saturday I wanted, there's your imperfect, what was happening, I wanted to go to Norwich, but my dad said, if you go to Norwich, you can't go to McDonald's because the food isn't healthy. I said, oh, I've only got money for the bus anyway. So we went to Norwich. I didn't want to tell my friends I couldn't eat at McDonald's, so we went to McDonald's. I was going to, there you are, there's our trick. I was going to order a salad, but when I saw the hamburgers in, on the screen, I decided to order two. Did you even notice I was going to, I decided to is a cheat? It works. I ate too much. I would have preferred to eat a healthy sandwich, and that's the cherry on top of the cake. Every story goes wrong. You can always have a, I would have preferred to. So hopefully we got more or less to where I said we would. Um, this is where you can find examples in French, Spanish and German. This AWL London branch is from 15 years ago. Or, um, so it's the very basic um, writing frames and some dice games. AWL also has wiki dot pages for literature. The literature is the most famous one, but there are also for speaking, for writing, for translation, for assessment um, and transition. So have a look at them. And there's lots of these examples of speaking activities, writing activities, writing frames um, on there. If you want to hear more of me and my partner in crime, who you heard speaking French earlier, then there's also the Vincent Everett French Spanish YouTube channel, which you can Google. And also lots of these materials and this presentation itself as a, as a PowerPoint presentation are available. If you go to my shop on TES, um, it's, that's free, the presentation, and you'll find other examples. Or um, give me a shout on Twitter, at Fee Everett MFL. Thank you very much.